All right, welcome back to the clinic. Let's go on for our second round of actions. I'm still the first player. First player isn't gonna change hands until the end of the round, um, you know, during administration when we change order. But we are both gonna choose secretly, still. I see, and I've already, and you know, and we could repeat the same thing. I uh, just hired some people. I could hire people again if I wanted. Because, you know, there's still staff out there. There's still the uh, most cost-effective nurse in the universe. Only costs one buck. And if nobody hires these nurses, they're going to be removed from the end of the game. Or, you know, for, from the game. But I think, I, I've got enough staff. The more staff I hire, the more I, it's going to cost me in overhead and, and, and in parking spaces. So, I think I'm going to go on ahead now and ad, admit some patients. Because I'm ready to start treating them. And let's see, now Jen, what is she going to do? Hmm, I think she will choose that. Okay, and so we all reveal at the same time, and now, boom, we are both admitting. Okay, we both chose the same thing. We both saw, and we both decided, hey, we, I mean, because every, all three of your actions, you always want to be the first to build because there's all these limited opportunities to build. You always want to be the first to hire because there's all these limited opportunities to hire, and the same is true for patients as well. So Jen was hoping to grab some patients before I did, but... Um, as it happens, I'm the first player, so that breaks the tie. Both of us doing it. I will admit first. And I believe... Now, how many patients do I get to admit? There's a reminder of it right over here. Um, you get to admit one patient whenever you do the admit action, plus one patient for every additional entrance into your clinic. Now, at the beginning of the game, I only have one entrance. So that means effectively I get to do two patients. The one I always get plus one more. If I start building more entrances, like it might be worthwhile to build an entrance right here. Because if I do, currently, if um, you know, my doctor is gonna have to walk one, two rooms. That's gonna be 15, um, 30 minutes. It's gonna spend 30 minutes to, uh, no, I'm sorry, no, five. 5, 10, that's 10 minutes to get there. And if I want my other doctor to go there, that's 10 minutes, that's 20 minutes. And then my patients would have to go. So maybe I want to make another entrance because then it only costs five. It cuts the time in half. It's another way to do shortcuts. And also, the more um, entrances I have, the more admissions I can do. But as it happens right now, I'm only going to be able to admit two people. And I'm the first to do it. So looking up here, seeing as how I'm the only player, or you know, right now we can only um, treat the uh, mentally disturbed, the people needing psychiatric care. I'm going to admit these two guys. One, two. And I just grabbed both of them. Two very, very lucrative um, patients to treat. And now it's Jen's turn and she's bummed because that's, those are the only ones she can treat too, so she can't grab them. So I guess now instead, Jen will, let's see, would she do that? She gets a, 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 a nice orange, aren't she? Yeah, I think Jen's going to take a bit of a gamble. Jen, she gets to admit two as well, because like me, she has one entrance. She's going to admit two from the medicine line. And they come, you can see, this is my row of waiting rooms. This is Jen's row of waiting rooms. So these guys go in the waiting room. Okay. And now Jen, she has no way to even treat these guys because she doesn't have the medicine ability. She's going to have to build a whole new wing of her clinic to be able to treat these patients she's just taken. But I took the one she wanted. But don't worry for her. It'll probably work out. All right. So that was our second action. And so we take them back. And remember, after everybody's done their actions, more clients come out. And so there's another depressed person, another person with bad eyeballs. And... Another person needing some medicine. Ooh, a big orange. The orange are, you know, if you treat an orange patient, that's 20 bucks. As opposed to treating a uh, white patient, you know, the easiest ones, which is only 8 bucks. Right, so, um, right, we both treat. Now, we get, we get to choose our last one. And now, since I, remember, you can do two. So I could admit more if I wanted. But you know what? I'm thinking I'm going to build. Because I haven't built yet. And I probably should get in on that. I'm tempted. I am tempted to admit more because I could get another patient and then one of a different type. And now these patients, they can wait in your waiting room for a long time. And you know, I mean, because this is basically just like them getting scheduled into your date book. This is you scheduling them for a uh, appointment in like you know six weeks or something like that. So they can sit in here for quite a while. And so, do I want to lock more people in, or do I want to start building? Because Jen could build again as well, and so she would have a chance to build another one of those super special places. Yeah, I better build, just in case Jen does as well. Because again, I would get to go first. And now let's see, what is Jen going to do? 
dee 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 dee. Oh, jeez. Now that would be interesting. Hmm. What can I do? I think. Yeah. Is this, should she do that? Is that insane? You know what? What the heck? Let's give it a try. Jen's gonna try something that's maybe categorically insane. We'll see. All right. So I reveal I'm building. Jen reveals. She is admitting. She is going to do a second admission op um, option. All right. So, and again, um, you know, when, when you have multiple things like this, first the person, whoever chose, whoever, whichever players chose to build, go first. All right. So I'm going to build. I gal get to build two things, and I think one of them is going to be another entrance because I would like to save some time. I don't. Although now, here's the thing. I could build an entrance over here, which means everybody can just get into the treatment room really quick. They don't have to, you know, go through the front office. Um, plus, that means in the future I'll be able to get bigger admissions, or in, you know, and that's going to cost me two bucks. But instead, I could do like Jen did, and just build a shortcut, and you know that would actually shave off even more time. But the shortcut doesn't give me the additional admissions, so I'm going to build a second entrance um, onto here, and so that cost me two bucks. I already paid it, right? Didn't I? How much have I paid so far? I bought that guy for two, and then I bought the, so that's three. No, Simon, okay, so I'll pay for my new entrance, and now I get one more thing to build, and I better build one of these cool special buildings like Jen did as well. So, this one is the one that really shaves on time. This is a full operating room. And this is a really interesting room, because remember how I was talking about rooms normally require that you have a uh, administration office and that you have you know the uh, ooh, the service room next to them. These um, operating rooms only require so I could put this here, and this does not require having a manned um, administration office. And what's uh, what's more importantly, even though I, now it's a, it's a bit of a downer, here I can put two doctors working on two patients. Here I can only have one doctor working on one patient, but this comes with a free nurse built in. That's a nurse that doesn't need parking, that doesn't need to be paid extra salary. And so this room basically allows, gives me a lot more flexibility in you know, doing uh, you know, operations. But I do kind of like the time thing. Oh, and then this other one. This is like the ER. This is the emergency response room or something like that. Or no, it's, what's it called? It has this weird, it's the extreme consultation room. But Jen and I, we just call it the ER. This is really interesting because unlike the, the regular room or the operating room, this room is completely standalone. It could be an entire building all by itself. It doesn't even, it doesn't need administration. It doesn't need uh, service either because any doctor could treat any patient in this room but the downside is you know if I mean if you treat like really high priority patients with the right doctors you make a lot of money if you treat any patient in this room with any doctor you only make six bucks but it's a guaranteed no matter what you can always treat patients so that's really really powerful and it gives you a lot of flexibility to deal with any patient that comes down the road so I could get that but you know what? I think of all of them, I am going to go on, I'm going to go ahead and take the timer one. Right. And so now this costs me two bucks. So I get three and change. And now I could go on ahead and add it to my existing building. But remember, well, I mean, I, Jen's already got a second building going. That means that's, um, if you have no additional buildings at the end of the game, that means you get no bonus points. If you have one additional building, that's worth one point. If you have two additional buildings, or I'm sorry, if you have one additional building, that's worth five points. Two additional buildings is worth 10. So, but the more buildings, you know, Jen having built this building has gobbled up four parking spaces. That, you know, so that makes it tougher for her to park. So I got to decide, do I want to do the same thing? Because that's worth five points. Or do I start building on the second floor? Because I could build this on the second floor above any of these first rooms. And it would still apply. Now this will apply no matter where I put this in my clinic. So do I want to start building? Although to build on the second floor, instead of costing two on the ground floor, it'll cost three bucks. But it will save me more space on the ground floor for more parking opportunities. Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Yeah, with that, let's go ahead and do this. Um, build on, let's see, but where would I build it? Would I build it uh, directly above this? Hmm. Or do I just expand my existing building? You know, what? I'm just going to expand the existing building. Keep it all together, because 
Either you're going to focus on trying to build several individual buildings like what Jen is doing. And if you do that, that means you're probably not going to build as high. Alternatively, you could build fewer buildings, but build higher and higher and higher. Because if you get functional um, treatment rooms on the first, second, or third floor, those are worth two, four, or six points. And so, but to build higher, you need to have a bigger, more flexible base. So I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna try and build higher, which means I need more bit rooms in the base. So I'm gonna put that right there. So I built two things, an additional entrance and one of the special rooms. Okay, and now, so I'm done. And now Jen, she gets to do an additional round of admissions. She still only has one entrance, so she gets to admit two more patients. She's gonna grab one of these psychiatry patients now too, since I grabbed all the original ones. And now she can get another one. I think, now here's the interesting thing. She could go on ahead and grab this high priority orange medicine one, but she's already got one. And so it's dangerous. Can she, does she, because here's the thing. If she, as these people who are waiting, you know, they're in the queue. Like I said, you know, they, they made their appointments at home. They're waiting to get there in. At the end of a round, they escalate in priority. This orange at the end of the round is going to change into a red. And if it doesn't get treated in the second round, he'll die and Jen will lose three victory points. So I don't know if Jen wants to take on the risk of getting a second one. So instead, she's gonna take one of these patients, one of these ophthalmology patients, you know, and slide over. So now Jen has a vested interest in trying to develop all three schools of medicine because she's got patients waiting in all three schools. All right, and then at the end of the round, of the, of the action, again, three new patients come out. Another white, another yellow, and... A white. There we go. Okay, so that's it, folks. We have finished the first phase, our three actions. All right, now we move on to move it. We got to move it, move it. Okie doke. So I've got four people, four staff members, plus these two people, uh, these patients who are waiting for treatment to get into my hospital. And the more I move, the more it's going to cost. Now, first of all, um, I, I could come in through this entrance, but since I built this entrance over here, I think I'm going to have them all come in through this entrance instead because that will save me some time. And including, I'm going to grab these two additional, um, what do you call them, patients as well. Oh crap, I totally forgot. While, I, I should have mentioned this, every time, or see, do, do you get, do they, do their cars come in now or do they come in, right, let me double check this, admitting patients. What I don't remember is, I don't remember is you have to add their cars to your parking lot as soon as you admit them or if you, as soon as you move them into the building. Let me look at this really quick. Uh, each patient you move into your pre-admission queue comes with a car. Yes, I totally forgot about this. I have two additional cars from these two patients gobbling up space. I'll just go ahead and put them down here and here. Jen has four additional cars gobbling up space. And she'll put them down here, here, here. And here, just all, all right, because you know, to represent all those patients. Now, so I'm gonna try and get these patients served this round. So there we go. So these are all the people, the two patients, the two doctors, the nurse, and the staffer that I've got to get moved in here. And by the way, this move phase, everybody can do it simultaneously because it doesn't really, what one player does doesn't affect any other player. Now, Jen, she's got two staffers to move in, and she's got all those people. Here's the funky thing. Jen is gonna let those people wait. Because here's the thing, right now they're all whites. If Jen um, treated any of them, if, uh, you know, if she treats a white patient, she gets eight bucks. But if she doesn't, if she lets them wait, they turn from whites to yellows. If she treats them next round, they're worth 12 bucks. If, you know, oranges, now if Jen doesn't treat this orange this round, it, right, it would be worth 20 bucks, but if Jen treats him next round when he's a red, it'll be 32 bucks. So Jen is actively getting a whole bunch of people in her queue that are gonna start getting into advanced stages and she's gonna make them wait. So Jen is only gonna move her one doctor and her one staffer into position. So let's go on and do Jen first, because this is easy. Five, 10, and then she's gonna take the shortcut, zoom, right over here. So that was 10, and then the staffer, 15, 20, 25, because he went from this room, you know, because again, adjacency counts vertically, you know, from floors as well. So uh, what was that again? It was 5, 10 for that guy, 15, 20, 25. So Jen just spent 25 minutes moving guys around. There we go. And now remember, every 15 minutes at the end of the game is one point lost. So Jen has lost one point. 
But it would have been a lot, it would have been more if Jen had had to move her guy. But now here's the thing. This guy at the end of the round in the lab is going to upgrade from a white doctor to an orange doctor. And that's going to help Jen ensure that she's going to be able to treat this red guy next turn and make 32 bucks next turn. So Jen's playing the long game. And in the meantime, she has gotten her staffer in position so that this staffer is prepared to um, support this room. But what Jen's planning on doing in the next round is building another room up here that will be an additional medical facility. So we'll worry about that next round. Okay. Right. So that was Jen. She just had a little bit of movement. It was a total of 25 minutes. Me, I got a lot more people to move. So I want both of these doctors and the patients all in this room. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20. Now I need to get the staffer into the administration room. 25, 30. And now I need this nurse in as well. So that's 35. So I just spent 35 minutes, which was 10 minutes more than Jen. But, and, you know, and now if I had had all these people moving in here, each one of them would have had to spend, that would have been 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 in additional minutes if I had not put this entrance in. This entrance just saved me 25 minutes, which was a big deal because they all got to come in through the side door. Okay. And remember, you can have up to two doctors and two patients and any number of nurses in a treatment room. You can only have one administrator in an administration room. If I had extra doctors or nurses, they could come out here and hang out in the, what do you call it, the, the service room, but uh, I didn't need to. Nobody can hang out in this special function room. Right, so we have done it, we've all done our movement and we've recorded how much time it's taken. Jen spent 25 minutes, I spent 35. So that effectively puts Jen in the lead, although we both, yeah, because I've lost two points and Jen's only lost one point on time. Although that won't come into play until the end of the game. Now it is time to save some lives, folks. We're going to get our income. Now, Jen, she is taking the long game. She's trying to get herself to be able to treat a red patient next round, which will make her 32 bucks. So this round, she's not treating anybody because there are, you know, and it's too bad. She could, she could have gotten this patient... She could have spent one, two additional 10 bucks and gotten him in position, and she could have let this guy, and he would have been able to treat her, and that would have been eight bucks Jen made. But uh-uh. Jen is going to let him wait, and instead has moved this guy over here to train in the lab. All right. And so, so Jen's not going to treat anybody. She is not going to make any income. Me, I, this yellow doctor will treat the yellow patient. One for one, that always works fine. That means this yellow patient is treated, and by the way, their car goes away, because so they leave, and I make 12 bucks. So here's five, 10, and 12 bucks. Nice, all right. So he says, thank you very much, and they're out of the game, all right. Now, there's this, and, now, and that doctor is done. That doctor, his work here is done. But there's another doctor, but unfortunately, he's not experienced. He's a white doctor, which means he's the weakest one. He's the one I started with. And so he cannot treat a yellow patient by himself. But for every level of difference of color between your doctor and your patient, a nurse can make up the shortfall. So a white doctor needs one nurse to take care of a yellow patient. If this were an orange patient, a white doctor would need two nurses to make up because you can only see there's, you know, it starts white, yellow, orange, red. A white doctor could treat a red patient if you had three nurses, but that means you're having to pay the salary of a bunch of nurses. But as it is, this yellow patient to be treated by this white doctor, had the nurses help. So this is the second yellow patient I've treated. And everybody sits back and relaxes having done it. Another car gets removed. All right, and so that's gone. The yellow patient is gone and I've made another 12 bucks. So I just made 24 bucks by treating those two patients. I used a bit more time and so we're done. Everybody's done their income. Now, you can make even more income if the treatment room is next to one of these little parks. You can, you can install parks, even in spaces where you normally wouldn't be able to build because there's cars parked. You can still put a park here, and that means the people who are treated in the adjacent room, for every a treatment in the adjacent room, you get two more bucks. If I had taken the time, man, it almost would have been smarter. Oh, crap, crap, crap. I totally forgot. By the way, remember I paid 35 minutes total? I forgot to take 15 off. 5, 10, 15. So I've actually used less time because I had this room. I totally forgot about that. So I used less time, so I'm actually, but if I hadn't bought this room, if I had built a park, this, the, both these patients would have recouped better and I would have made four additional bucks, two for every, if I put a park there, but I didn't because I did that anyway, instead and that saved me a bunch of time. 
So basically, by having the extra interest, by having this, I've saved myself a lot. I did more than Jen, and I spent less time doing it, which will pay off at the end of the game. All right, so anyway, and I, and I got rid of, um, so now I've got one, two, three, four cars left. One, two, three, four. Oh, actually, this car was parked over here. There we go. So um, we've both done our income. Now, it is at this point during income, um, or is it at that point you can do it? No, I don't think it is. You get to, when do you get to pay? No, I guess it must be later. All right, so now we have to do our expenses. Every employee um, you have on staff costs a buck, although the better your doctors are, they cost two, three, or four bucks. Also, every tile you've got costs one, or in some cases, three bucks. Every garden you have costs one bucks on maintenance. But every pink staff employee you have reduces the cost by three. So let's look at my overall cost. I've got one, two, three, four rooms. Um, five, six, seven employees plus the yellow is eight, nine. So right now it costs me nine bucks to run this thing. However, since I have a pink employee, that takes three off the total cost. So my actual total costs are six. So I'll pay six back. All right. And so I've done expenses. And now, like I said, I don't remember exactly when you're allowed to, right, okay, it is during. now. If you profited this round, you may use income earned this round and only income. So I still got a bunch of extra profit I made. And this is where you make the majority of your points. There's a few little ways here and there you can make points, but it mostly at the end of the game, you lose points for the time you've spent. You get some points for extra buildings and stuff. But the main way is you gain points throughout by taking some of the profits you make and um, spending it three for one for advertising to become more popular, because that's victory points in this game is popularity. So what did I, I just made a total of 24 profit, or actually no, All right, but after my income, well see that's the thing, money I had left over from a previous round, I can't use that. The thing is the game does not want you to just, um, you know, uh, build up money, 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 and then at the very, very end just buy all the, the marketing in the world. Money I had left over, I can't spend. I can only spend my profits towards marketing. And, but I want to save some of my profits so I can do more, I can build more um, rooms and I can hire more staff and all that next round. So I think I am going to take, let's say I'm going to take um, nine bucks. See, these are five, so that's 10. I get one buck back. I'll spend nine bucks. That's three victory points I'm buying. One, two, three. And that's still, well, you know what? Actually, what the heck? Let's say uh, six more. Uh, so that's two more points. So let's say I bought five victory points and that still leaves me at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven bucks. I've still got plenty of money to spend on the next round to hire more staff, etc., etc. I'm pretty good with that. And now that has put me way in the lead. Now we gotta do all this for Jen as well. Now Jen didn't treat anybody, but she does have expenses. She has one, two, three, four rooms, five, six employees, so that's six, but she has a pink. So that takes three off. So Jen only owes three bucks. All right. So after all that, she's got eight bucks left over. Um, although she didn't make any profit, so she cannot spend any of it towards advertising right now because she made no profit this turn. This is all leftover cash from before. So Jen is not going to buy any marketing which means she's gonna stay at zero victory points. Anyway, so now we're done with expenses and now at the end of the round, we do administration. The first thing we do is we update buildings. And what that means, we come up here, these two nurses, nobody hired any nurses, they're gone, removed from the game. Doctors, um, let's see, right. These doctors who didn't get hired, they continue their studies in university and become better. This white becomes a yellow and this yellow becomes an orange. And another doctor enters the pool, and he's another white, so. And so this orange guy still costs four. All right, so, um, oh, the um, patients who are in these X spots who've been waiting the longest, they say to heck with it, they walk away. They just go back into the cup, they're done waiting. So that's it for updating the buildings. Now, we have to, um, our doctors, can either, any doctor who's in a lab, they, the, Jen has a doctor in a lab, this guy's just like the ones in the university. They get a little bit better, but this guy's even better because he jumps, he jumps from a yellow directly to an orange. So that means Jen is gonna have an orange doctor, but we're not done yet because the patients who are sticking around, the patients who are in the queue, who no one's talked to yet, they don't worsen. But the patients who we have talked to and we've made appointments with, they worsen. Every one of these yellows of gens, or those whites, I'm sorry, turns into a yellow. 
One, two, three. And this orange that Jen's waiting on turns into a red. This guy is critical. If Jen does not treat him next round, he'll die and Jen will lose points. But Jen's got a very smart orange doctor now. Jen just needs this orange doctor plus one nurse and she can treat this guy and make 32 smackers. Or Jen doesn't even a nurse. If Jen builds this room, because remember it has a built-in nurse, Jen, her orange guy in, this, in the operating room could treat this guy and save him and earn Jen 32 bucks. So she'll have a ton of money to make up for the fact she didn't make any money this round. Right, so um, all of these patients worsened, all of these doctors got better, and the doctor in the lab got better. The other doctors, the ones who work day to day on the floor, they get worse. Um, docs in labs progress, others regress. So my, um, my white doctor can't regress anymore, but my guy, he was so, worked so hard, he downgrades from a yellow to a white. And that's really a problem because now the, you, know, you want to hire really, really high level doctors, but over time they will drop in their value, which means nurses become even more important because you need more nurses to, take, to help out these exhausted doctors who can barely stay ahead of all the tough patients they got. But not Jen, she's got a lab. She can do more training from within. So anyway, so the doctors got worse, the patients worsened, nobody died yet, and now we reevaluate player order. And since I am now the most popular hotel, or not hotel, hospital a clinic in the world, in this town, that means we reverse, because whoever's least popular becomes the first player. So Jen is the first player. That means this all went to plan. Jen is first, if she builds, she can guarantee, she can get this surgeon, the uh, operating room, which means she can guarantee this guy, using a shortcut, maybe just coming over here, will be able to treat this guy and get 32. Plus, Jen could maybe buy this yellow guy and then treat one of her yellow guys. But she can let these guys continue to kind of ripen because Jen doesn't have to pay through the nose like I do to get really smart university doctors. She can just train them internally. So we're already off to the races in completely different plans. Jen's got two different buildings. She's training from within. Me, I'm just trying to be hyper efficient with time um, because even though I did more, I used less time than Jen. So by the end of the game, Jen might, you know, I, I've actually seen Jen lose. I mean, if you spend all five hours over the course of this game, that's 20 points you're gonna lose. Um, you know, and that's a big, big hit at the end of the game. So I'm trying to avoid that hit at the end of the game. I'm also building up a bigger single space so that I can build higher and higher. But Jen is probably gonna build higher too because on the second floor, that's because remember, Jen can't treat this guy until she can get a medicine room. So she's gonna have to build one of these and maybe like put it here. But here's the problem, Jen has to build that but she also needs the room to treat the guy. If she puts this on the second floor, she would need to put the room on the second floor as well, but she can't put this room down until she puts another room on the first floor. So she's gotta deal with that problem. She has to deal with all the three-dimensional building because I'm building flat right now. I'll go higher later. Jen's going higher right now and, um, you know, and, and so on. And plus, Jen's got all, even though she's got all these, and these are kind of ripening, they'll be worth a lot more points. In the meantime, Jen is really limiting her ability to build because all these cars are parked. So maybe Jen needs to build a parking lot so she can take up some of them. And the game will continue. That was just the first of six rounds. And the game just gets crazy complex as you're building vertically, as you're trying to find parking spaces, as you're trying to figure out every round, how much money should I spend on marketing? How much money do I need to save for next turn? And so on, as you continue to try to make the most popular clinic in town. And that's it folks, that was a run through of just the first of six rounds. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can follow the show notes or hit the button that's on screen right now in five, four, three, two, one.